Alright, welcome back to the Stanley Parable. Last time, we closed the office door and we defied the narrator. This time... Stanley knew the office layout like the back of his hand. It was only a matter of time before he found the others, whatever they were. Just a matter of time. Sharon always leaving her computer on. I'm still a boss about that eventually. Dave. This thing. Yeah. And that one. It's like, it really is an epidemic of people just leaving their freaking computers on. It's kind of ridiculous. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Hmm. I guess I can go through this door. Yeah, everything's not too bad. This doesn't look too bad. Oh, hey, the conference room. Yet there was not a single person Dits here. for not either. getting fired. Do unbelief in the wave of disbelief. Hey. Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. How to solve a dispute with a coworker? Let it ball up inside you. Take it out. Pass for Chris. Okay. Losing, using slides to assure employees that everything's okay. Make sure your slide has, has a sick blue graphic and the header, and I'll throw some bevel on the. T okay, everyone is unique. You most of all. Where's the projector? Oh, there it is. The numbers on slides on the side. Charts, charts, and slides, slides. Okay. Synergize core value expenditures. Shift global market prod monetize free to play. The stock market somewhere here. Stripes require some secondary research. What is hot? Target demographic teenagers. Hmm? Graphs about things and money. We have our new product. Wow. Do we just make graphs here? Broom closet. Oh, fuck yeah. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here. There's even a broom so he in here. Around and got back on track. No, fuck you. I'm looking at stuff. Touching everything. Wow, look at this. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. And screw no you, man. There's duct tape in here. here. There's, there's a bunch of duct tape. Tape and some... Some wrenches and pliers. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even awesome. doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet FA. Fuck all. I'm sorry, just saying what FA stands for. Are you are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? No, I just left. Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back. Is this broom closet part of an ending? Like, can I just stay in here? I probably ruined it already. And we'll come back to it another time. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. No, no, let's go to our boss's office. Bosses. Executive bathroom. Damn it, it's locked. And we're trapped. Yeah, at least she didn't leave her computer on. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Well, I'm a bit sighty. 
Incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Oh, it's dark in here. Do I have a flashlight? No, I do not. Can't jump, don't have a flashlight, but I can crouch. Hmm. Oh, jeez. I'm going to cut the loading. Be right back. Oh, wait. Never mind. Don't need to. I think. Excuse me. Alright, we're back with the loading. Yay. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. All right, let's get going. Um, wow, I'm lagging hard here. Hang on, there's like dust and shit Barry right now. Barry walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. You know, there's something called Escape right here, and I think I'm going to take that. Seems like a good option. Although this passageway had the word Escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Eh, you don't know that. You're just a narrator. What, what do you know? The door behind him was not shut. Viva la revolution. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Nope, still going this way. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Fuck yeah, better than being mind control. Whoa. Hey, there's a light over here. It's down here. Oh shit. More loading. Son of a bitch. get stuck when he hits that one right like you don't actually crush it it'll just so he designed and willingly yeah, it'll, accepted this it'll just attend to his brief it'll just get stuck like it'll jam like it won't cru oh god it crushed it ha <laughs> i did get stuck well stanley cried the narrator huh? as stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws in a single visceral instant Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Um, okay. Whoa. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? Whoa. When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Alright, uh... I guess it's a little Easter egg room. Um, here are the nature paintings. All of them. Not a lot, but there's enough to keep you occupied with your... by looking at them. 
uh, the office layout. This blueprint shows the office from the beginning of the game. The path from Stanley's office to the two doors was the first part of the game that was built. Sections have been added and altered throughout the development, though the core layout remains almost identical to the first iteration. Huh. Yeah, there's our office. There's... Huh. Alrighty then. Corridor of the pacing of this open section was important to get right. The corridor has been moved and altered to make sure player reaches the two doors in a good time. Well, I guess to make it not feel tedious. The two doors. The set of two doors at the very first concrete piece of the Stanley Parallel design. Once the room was created, the rest of the game emerged as an extension of it, an exploration of the contradiction in this room posed. Button sounds, a selection of sounds used throughout the game when buttons are pressed. Each sound is a mix of a keyboard stroke and a synthesized tone. Huh. Cool. Office computers. Jeez, how much power does this place take up? Is that a skylight? Okay, that's a skylight. I don't say that's one, just one big giant light. I'm gonna be very mad. Oh, here's the uh, maintenance room. Another version of the maintenance room. The office plants. Green light. In September 2012, we submitted the Stanley Green Parable to Green Light Bal to Green Light Bal's process of approving games for Steam. The Green Light page had only a series of cryptic photos, which were still enough. To win the community's approval. Huh. Wow. After the second trailer, we sent out and asked people to email the narrator for questions. While we had initially planned for these and and further promotional materials, we never found the perfect use for them. Here's a section of those emails. A selection. I can't see anything. The f okay, then. I guess that's not working. Um, you know what? I would explore all this, and I kind of want to. This is Stanley's he's, uh, cubicles. From left to the right, the evolution of Stanley's office over time. The first was created on November twenty, November two thousand eleven. The first, second, March two thousand twelve, and the third in February two thousand thirteen. All right, so first, second, final. Okay, so this is the weird Easter egg ending, or like I like to call it the gallery ending. Do -do -do -do. Got William hired to design the full game. Though much of the environment has changed, the basic layout of the mockup is still in the game. Wow. Huh. This is all really neat. I like this. And there's the exit. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Hmm. Let's turn it off. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program oh, before they both fail. Uh, push uh, uh, and press quit. Uh, There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and be oh, only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let oh time. God! And we're 
dead. Um. Okay, I'm Rick Duran. I'll see you guys later. Same righteous. Rate, gaunt, subscribe, do all good stuff. And I guess we'll continue this next time, maybe? I don't know. See you then.